But listen, this is a special night. I'll tell you why. It is a special show. Not just because we have an audience here for the second night in a row, because, ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a very, very special night, and he doesn't know that we're going to do this, and I think there's a camera going in right now. The director of our show, Tim Mancinelli, who's in the booth right there, who's directed every single episode of The Late Late Show. <laughs> Tim has directed every single episode of The Late Late Show. We love him so much, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Tim started working... I want to get this right. He started working as a PA on The Late Late Show back in 1995. He worked his way from PA to director of the show. This is his 5,000th Late Late Show. Tim, we love you so much. We really do. We love you every single day, and we're so happy that we're here on this special day for you, buddy. Yeah, got the job with... Got an AD job with Tom Snyder, was AD for Craig Kilborn, then became de director of Craig Ferguson, and he's now the director of this show right now. Tim, you got anything you want to say to your adoring public? Oh, oh. oh. Uh, this is quite a surprise. Um, just to thank everybody that's been part of the team on the journey of 5,000 shows. I mean, it's been, uh, it's been amazing to watch it from where, to start at the bottom and to be where I'm at. Um, you don't do that without a lot of help from a lot of people. So, <laughs> thanks. I didn't think I'd get emotional. <laughs> oh, we love you, Timbo! We love you so much! Oh. What a guy. What a great guy. We love him so much. We really, really do. Do you love him, Pete, or not so much? <laughs> He's the best. I actually couldn't imagine anybody not liking Tim Mancinelli, could you? There's no possible way. No possible way. Do you know, how long's his drive here, Rob, every day? He's like a seven-hour commute. He's doing, he? uh, since 95, he's been doing, uh, an hour and a half each direction, so three hours a day. So, I mean, he's so rich. <laughs> he's so rich, he could, he could, he could probably buy... Where does he live? Uh, it was, like, I don't know, south of Anaheim. He like... could buy Anaheim now with these residuals. <laughs> He legit took a helicopter here once. That's which is, true. Which is something only Dr. Phil and Steve Harvey have done before him. Yeah. <laughs> but it, this is what... Yeah, this, is, this is actually the mark of the man, that you mentioned that. The, uh, the, the time that Tim Mancinelli took a helicopter... Do you know why he took a helicopter? Because his daughter was... Was she prom queen? Homecoming. His daughter was homecoming queen at her school, and he wanted to walk her in to the, uh, to the event. It's a bit American for me. What, what, I don't know what you do. <laughs> oh, yeah, you hate queens and kings over there. <laughs> no, but Tim realised that if he, if he did... He wanted to do the show, cos he never wants to miss a show, and so he got a helicopter to wait here. He finished the show, ran up, got in the helicopter, tucks on, landed, and walked his daughter in because he couldn't bear to miss it. And that is the mark of the man. We love him so much. <laughs> Happy 5,000 shows, Tim Murray. We love you. <laughs> we do. All right, well, look, no, we, we can't just sit around. We can't just sit around here celebrating, you know, director's shows and all things like that. We have, we have a duty to uphold. We do. We have a duty to give the American public, nay, I say... Planet Earth, actually. Planet Earth. It's time for the news. <laughs> and we have a new Donald Trump tell-all book to tell you about. It's making the headlines. This one is from Trump's former White House press secretary, Stephanie Grisham. And one part of the book has definitely raised a few eyebrows. According to the New York Times, Mr Trump's handlers designated an unnamed White House official who was known as the Music Man, who, to pull Trump back from the brink of rage, would play him his favourite show tunes, <laughs> particularly the song Memory from Cats. <laughs> True story. 
I have so many questions. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Imagine being that man. Oh, you work at the White House? What do you do? Well, I just have to monitor President Trump's mood, and just when I think he's getting into a real mood, I just bang. Midnight, <laughs> no sound from the pain. Tell you what I know for sure. When Ryan Murphy eventually makes an American crime story about the Trump White House, I am 100% playing the music man. <laughs> Trump needed to hear show tunes to calm him down, or else he'd make everyone around him Le Miserable. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Look at Susan! You don't... I don't see what the big deal is with this. I really don't. I thought everybody had a music man. That's why we have... That's why I have Dave Piendak work here. <laughs> Dave Piendak's my music man. Like, if I get... Uh, Dave, sing I Dreamed a Dream. Go. I dreamed a dream in time gone by <laughs> When hope was high and life worth living in other news, the Treasury Secretary announced today that unless Congress raises the debt ceiling, the United States government will likely run out of cash by October 18th. The country could default on its debts. Yeah. You know what's going to happen? Biden's going to have to start an OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for the audience here who come today. I do. I feel bad for all of you. You finally, you finally get the chance to go to a live show for the first time in over a year and you met with a British guy pretending he knows what the debt ceiling is. <laughs> Moving on, Michelle and Barack Obama were at the groundbreaking ceremony for the Obama Presidential Center today. The $500 million project in Chicago will not only house a museum, public library and plaza, but also a playground and bike paths. Yeah, so far it's not going well. Republicans are already demanding to see a long-form building permit. <laughs> Smart joke. Smart joke. <laughs> Let me guess. I wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing with presidential. You know what I'd like for once? Just some president to be like, Do you know what? I've read enough books. Let's build a presidential water park. <laughs> It'd be great if a president just went, I'm going to build a presidential water park. A couple of log flumes, lazy river, you know? When was the last time you went to a water park? It's been a long, long time. Mm. A long time. Yeah. But you and I, and our friend Louie, in about three weeks... <laughs> oh, God. Magic Mountain. You agreed to it. It's happening. Yeah, no, you, you two are so pumped on this, I can't yeah. deal with it, actually. It's you weird you're it. not. You what? It's weird you're not. I am, but, like, it's a way off. It's a way away. Mm. Have something to look forward to. Circle yeah. it on the calendar, count down the days. Have something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely pumped for it. Yes. Because you just want to see Ian scared on a roller coaster. Yes. That's it. <laughs> I think it's going to be an absolute blast. Yeah. yeah Are we yeah. going to have a couple of drinks? Are we going to have a couple of drinks? Yeah. yeah? Well, I'm not. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and you shouldn't. <laughs> but if I you, might. <laughs> <if> you... <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I'm gonna. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, got, got to push back on that it's one. It's happening. No. <laughs> Please don't. No, I won't. Please don't. My name's Louis. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm excited for this. Sorry, yeah. Do you, are you a roller coaster guy, Reg? Do you like roller coasters? No, f that. <laughs> Why? I'm just afraid. Are you afraid? Uh, yeah, very much. I think, you'd l I think you'd be a hoot on a roller coaster. I don't know, man. Do you want to come? I don't know. I tried a kitty one once, and it was sweet. You tried a kitty one once? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, like a real simple, like, you know, nice one. That's yeah. cool. And I can do the teacups. Those are great. Okay, yeah. I went to a fair the other week, like a state fair sort of thing in Malibu, and there, there was, you know, that, you know that ride? It sort of lifts up, and you're on, like, a swing? And you go oh, round and round yeah. like that. And I went yeah. on with my, my daughter, she's six, and my son, who's ten. I was in between us. We had a great time. My daughter had never been on anything like that. She's like, oh, my, it's amazing. And we got off, and I was like, Kerry, wasn't that incredible? She went, I loved it, Dad. I loved it. And the guy who was letting in the thing, she, he, went, he went, you know, that used to be at Neverland. 
The ranch. And I was like, cheers, mate. <laughs> wow. I was having a really... I was having a really great moment with my six-year-old and ten-year-old son. <laughs> yeah, but as I said, as I, as I said, Obama's presidential building... <laughs> <laughs> this is what the centre will look like when it's completed in four years' time. Look at that. I like that after vetting thousands of designs, they, they decided to spruce up Chicago's Jackson Park the same way I did my old bachelor flat with a Himalayan salt lamp. <laughs> Can, I just say, you Can I just say, it's refreshing to see a building that doesn't look like a <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, That could be a You can say that. You can say that. Thank you very much. Is it refreshing? It. It's so refreshing, cos when men build things, it's like, oh, another <laughs> She right. She right. Yeah, I think you're right. Cos my looks exactly the same as the Sydney Opera House. <laughs> I was involved in a tragic fishing accident. <laughs> um, and finally, a bicyclist in Australia used the GPS on his cycling app to recreate Nirvana's iconic album cover for Nevermind. It took him more than eight hours to ride the whole 93-mile distance. Here it is here. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Wow. I don't believe it. Did he really do that, or has he just got access to a good Photoshop? <laughs> Imagine being in the middle of that ride. You run into a friend. You have a chat, and you're like, uh... Oh, well, listen, I can't stick around. I've got to get back to uh, drawing this baby d <laughs> <laughs> It actually did inspire me. It did, it did. I actually hopped on my bike this weekend to recreate an album cover of my own. Uh, I did the Beatles' White Album. Absolutely <laughs> nailed it. And that, that's the news. We'll be right back with more of The Late Late Show, everybody.